Mental illness is a huge issue in this country, and according to Statistics Canada, one in five Canadians will experience a form of mental illness at some point in their life. And for those with more severe cases, the effects on them and their families can be devastating and very difficult. Connie Jacob knew early on there was something just not quite right with her son Ben, and by the age of five, he was diagnosed with several things, including anxiety, depression, and Asperger's. At that point, Connie and her husband knew they were facing some hard years ahead as their son became more aggressive and angry. Connie, welcome to 100 Huntley Street. Thanks for having me. So your son is born, you're excited, you're raising this little guy. When did you suspect things were just a little off? You know, about 18 months to four. My husband and I just thought, man, this parenting thing is really indeed hard. Um, but it wasn't until our second one was born, when my oldest was four, and we realized a lot of the things that our youngest was doing was very different. It was much more relaxed, and so that's when we realized there must be something a little off here. What were some of the symptoms? Because a lot of time when there's depression, it can be a sadness and, you know, kind of pulling back. But with Ben, it was the other direction. He was more aggressive. Yes, more angry, more oppositional. Um, and it wasn't just strong will. It was so much further than that. And so that's, that was our two keys, anger and opposition. So you get him diagnosed about the age of six. What were you thinking at that point? Like, are, you know, we're in for a long road here or how are you processing? Well, we wanted answers. We just needed to know what we were dealing with. Um, so that we could know how to respond because at that point we were trying everything we read every parenting book and nothing was working and so once we had that diagnosis we felt like there's a starting place hmm. so the age of eight uh, he is even suicidal what what was going on at that time well that was really hard I you know and I work in resilience with youth for the past 20 years and here I am you know, doing school programs, talking about mental health, and here's my own son. I'm able to help everyone else but him. And I think it's because parenting children with any kind of mental illness is harder than just guiding them. And so when he would be asked to put on his shoes because he has um, different things that are going on in his brain, I would have to say it sometimes 10 times. And by the 10th time, I mean, I'm yelling. So I feel like my son spent the first eight years of his life being yelled at. And, and he didn't hear the, the times when it was nice. Mm. He heard the times when mom got angry today. That's what he heard. And so I feel like all of the things that led up to him feeling like, well, I don't know how to handle my big emotions. I don't know what this sadness is. I don't know why I can't focus. I don't know why in school I'm having a hard time too. He was just hit everywhere. School, it was hard. Home, it was hard. And I think he just had it and didn't know how to deal with it. How were you doing at that time, you know, as a follower of Jesus? Uh, were you feeling guilty? Mm -hmm. Are you feeling I'd, maybe I don't have enough faith or what have I done wrong? Yeah, so much shame, so much shame. And shame is a bully. It's, it, it'll just beat you down. What's wrong with me? Do I not have enough faith? Jesus, where are you? Why is my son struggling? Why us? Um, why is, what's going on? Just so many questions. I honestly felt really distraught, felt a lot of despair in those years. So what did you do? Eventually you, you, you go to the Calgary Children's Hospital and what are they saying and how are you handling it? Well, so we finally were able to see a psychiatrist and she said, if your son is ever threatening his life, you have to take him to the Children's Hospital. Okay. So that's what we did. We took him there and we had no idea what that was going to be like. We didn't know how long he would be there or what was going to happen. We had no idea. How are you getting through this? Because that, you know, often puts a lot of pressure on a marriage too. Oh, I'm surprised our marriage has survived. I really am. It, it is very hard. You're both exhausted. You will blame each other. So there's a lot of conflict going oh, on. Oh, you'll blame each other. You'll blame yourself. You'll blame your child. Uh, you always want to pinpoint it on someone or something when a lot of times there really isn't anywhere to pinpoint. Okay, Connie, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about something that changed just the whole way you thought and parented and even about God when we return with Connie Jacob on 100 Huntley Street.